for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Teams. This is Mad Money Shots. Never the Man Cheese, as always. Got another full breakdown video for you guys today. If you guys don't know, I try to put out at least one full breakdown of a playbook every single month. This is typically stuff that you find on my ebooks or on my Join Our Community tab, my Patreon. And I try to give you guys a preview of it here. This month, it's going to be the Raiders. Uh, the Raiders is just one of the best playbooks left that I haven't done. As always, if there's a playbook that I haven't done that you guys would like to see, let me know in the comment section. That might be the playbook that I do next month. If you guys want me to continue this series, make sure you hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Next up, we got the bench pivot. Against cover three, just put the RB route on a streak. And he's going to have a very big play against cover three. Now, this is a tight end right now, but typically you can put your fastest receiver there. I just have my third receiver as my tight end. Uh, this could be an easy one play touchdown. If you really want to spread the defense, you can put the running back out and put him on a streak of some kind just to keep that safety over as much as possible. And now you can see you can have a very big play up the seam because he does get past the cornerback. So a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. And you're really gonna have success against any man or zone with the A route as well. As you can see, he's not really covered either. So cover two, cover three, he'll get outside, cover four also. And the B route is a really good man beating route. Although you can see here, he's also gonna have success getting outside of the cover three. So it's a very hard play to stop. I'm gonna run this against a man coverage a couple times. Like I said, very easy play, just bullet, pass lead outside. You can steal that all game. Next up, we got the bunch trail. Streak the B route. And against cover two zone, uh, Waller will find space in that gap once again. Pretty much every route here beats man. Uh, I would say the RB route is probably the best, but you can see the drag will beat it, the comeback route will beat it, the R the uh, the R1 route will beat it. Let's go. Let's do the A route real quick. Like I said, that's something that uh, typically man coverage has a hard time covering. If you want to get the RB route though, you typically against man cover two like a man, you have to streak, and then you can see how this guy will get open even against a uh, cornerback like he's facing. Against cover four, just block everyone. Um, you, can, you can't block um, the B route or the RB route, but you basically block everybody you can block, I should say. And then the X route here is going to get past uh, the safety over the top for another easy one-play touchdown. So that's the way for him to get inside the free safety. Go to the replay real quick. Just have to wait for this receiver to get inside the free safety here and then bullet and pass lead away because he's well beyond what this strong safety can do to come back and get into the play. Next up, we have the flanker drive. Same setup as a previous play block, the tight end. Drag the RB route, put the X route, or the B route on a flat. And this uh, X route here will get past that safety one more time. It's pretty much the exact same concept as uh, the previous play. Next up, we have the verticals. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna motion out the B route, put the X route on a drag. That's all you really have to do. And the B route here will get open outside of the cover two. Now you could also streak the A route to pull that safety back. But I don't feel like it's 100% necessary on this particular play. And we'll do that again. Like I said, against cover two, you get a really big play up the sideline for a catch and run as long as you throw that ball on timing correctly once he passes the cornerback and bullet and pass lead away from the strong safety. Against cover three, just motion this guy out here and you'll have a lot of space in the seam to the A route. As you can see, he just gets open right in that area. Next up, we have the Y curl. It's gonna be a very big play against cover three. I like to motion out the running back streak, the A route. That's pretty much all you have to do. The A route's gonna be the biggest play, um, especially if you run to the sideline again. It's just a good play up the seam. Next up, we have the Z spot. All you really have to do is streak the B route. That's pretty much it. The RB route here is going to be the play against just about any zone coverage. As you can see, he just gets wide open as those uh, safe as the safety gets spread too far apart from the uh, the cornerback. That's really all you have to do. Against cover three, it'll have similar success, but you could also bomb it up for a one play touchdown. It's going to motion over the running back here, put him into a streak, 
Uh, you won't have a ton of coverage, but that'll keep the safety away. And then the B route here can have a lot of success right over the top. As you can see, we almost have a one-play touchdown. I'll say it's a one-play touchdown. If I had a little bit more speed, he probably would have been gone. But that's a really easy read. You just have to run it from the hash mark. Next up, we have the Z spot and go. So all I'm going to do is streak the B route once again. The RB route here will have the most success against cover two, against cover three. You can see right there, I mean, I should have had a touchdown, but I don't know how I stepped out of bounds. Against cover three, the running back in the flat is a better play. Cover three and cover four, even man coverage sometimes if the if it's not aligned properly. Next up, we have the curl flat corner. Put the B route on a streak, put the X route on a drag. And this is pretty much gonna be your best play against cover two man in the formation. As you can see, the X route here, typically beats that outside. We'll also have that success against cover two zone with the same setup. So any cover two, I don't need the running back or the tight end, but any cover two, this Y route will be a very big play. Cover two man, cover two zone. Although you probably wanna run with somebody a little bit more speed. As you can see, I don't really have a speed advantage with this guy, I don't even know who he is. So let's go and let's do this again. I, mean, I do kinda of know who he is, but <laughs> he's not really anybody that I can say like, we're getting a lot of uh, advantage here. As you can see, you can drop it in the bucket regardless and get a big play, but a better receiver would be optimal. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's not a good run play. It's a man coverage like this. I mean, it might not be the best look, but you can see that receiver did a really good job of clearing out those, uh, those the, I think it was a cornerback and a safety. Next up, we got the PA boot over. It's another play that's good against random plays. All I have to do is streak the A route. And these crossing routes, I mean, number one, the B route is always going to be there for a quick catch and run, whether it's man or zone, and the other crosser above it will get open as well. So this is just a very easy play. Um, and like I said, because they're so close, they get across the formation really quickly. So it's just a really easy high-low play versus man or zone. You're just watching the two crossing routes. The A route really is just pulling back uh, any unwanted zones. And then you can see how you can have a lot of success there. That was probably a cover two or cover three, and I'm getting close to 40 yards on the catch and run. Next up, we got the stick. So I'm just gonna motion this guy out here, put the Y route on the streak, put the A route on the streak, and block the running back. And we're gonna see how this Y route here has a lot of success, even though the safety's right there. A lot of times he will chase the tight end for whatever reason. You can see we have a one play touchdown. I don't really have a lot of speed there, but it still worked out. You could also motion across the B route here just to move the safety across and block the tight end, block the running back, or block the running back, streak the tight end. Gonna be the exact same effect the y route is going to be gone once again not a lot of speed not a speed advantage but you can see how easily it gets going up the seam in a cover three i'm going to put the y route on the streak put the a route on a drag and against just about any man or zone or any zone coverage i'm sorry the bunch receivers will get open the a route will be a drag like against man coverage or cover four quarters which is what that looked like it was that's going to be your best option there will be the drag route. So let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, against man or zone, cover two especially. Here we go, we got another man coverage. Like I said, I'm just gonna take away, I'm just gonna send the wall. Right? Anytime it's a man coverage, I'm gonna take that uh, the, the drag route. Next up, we got the X spot. A random. Against man or zone, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put the X route on a streak. I'll block my right back, he's not really doing too much. But ultimately, this is just about getting that Y route open. As you can see right there, that was a man coverage. Maybe a little bit of a late throw. That was a man coverage and had a lot of success. So any man or zone really should have success. The A route will be really good against man. That will be a good check down. But uh, the Y route is going to be cover two, cover three, cover four. Uh, pretty much anything right here. That looks like a cover two. If I threw it a little bit quicker, maybe I would have been able to get a catch and run. But you can see it's still very successful. So any zone coverage. So we're going to put this running back on a, str on a streak, motion him out. Put everybody on the street except for the Y route and the B route. And now the X play is going to be a very big one play touchdown against cover three. Although there, I mean, I had to throw a little bit early so it didn't get going, but it still is an easy play. Next up, we have the Y trail. It's a good man coverage play. Basically, the drag or the A route will be, to, uh, be pretty much any man coverage. If it's man cover one, a lot of times there's a yellow zone, so you might have to take... You know, man cover two, man zero, there won't be a yellow zone sitting in the middle of the field, so you'll have to take the drag uh, in those scenarios. The route that the X route is running can get right past cover four, especially if you smart route it. Um, so I'm just going to do that, and then all you really have to do is lob the pass up once he gets past a certain point, and then just switch over and sprint. You can have a really big play against cover four quarters. It's also a big play against cover two, but you have to motion over the tight end and put him on a streak. 
That's probably just a streak everybody. I would say drag. If it's cover two, this would be the setup. Streak R, B, A, and drag B. Let's go and let's put cover two out there. Go ahead. We'll just wait for this X route once again to get outside the cornerback. Bullet pass lead away, and the safety's in no position really to make a play. You can get a one-play touchdown out of that. I really get it there, but you can see you can get a big play. Next up, we got the middle high low against um, cover two and cover three. You can motion this guy in, put him on a streak. Go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll pick Tampa two. And you're going to see that the uh, the B route can really have a lot of success outside and be a very big play. It could typically be gone. Next up, we got the quarterback draw. If your opponent spreads their defense to try to match these wide uh, running formations, you can basically just hit them with this draw, and it's a pretty good play. You need a mobile quarterback, and there's also a chance of fumbling. So when I run this a lot of times, I will slide, but ultimately this is one of the better uh, run plays that a lot of people won't necessarily expect. So like I said, fumbles happen. I typically try to slide so that I can avoid that. Uh, I even tried to slide there, and it didn't work out. So ultimately be aware of that. But anytime there's a really spread defense with not a lot of linebackers, you can still run this play with success. Next up, we have the, slow, the strong curl. Run this against random defenses. All I'm going to do is put the X route on the street, motion them in. Whenever it lets me, put the A route on the drag. You can put the RB route and the B route on any number of check downs you want. They're not really critical to the play. But uh, this Y route here, I don't know what defense that was, but it doesn't really matter. Man or zone, it typically has that effect. Not against man as much. The drag would typically be the man read. We'll go ahead and we'll go with uh, cover three. Just give myself. Uh, something that we can see for you know what the actual zone is instead of guessing after the fact but uh, but yeah you can see once again same thing wide open in the outside because of that drag cover two obviously will have that effect let's go and let's do that one time it's gonna be the same thing though uh the y route's gonna get open although he's getting open a lot easier he's rounding that route off pretty poorly and it's still wide open so any man or zone that's going to be successful any zone that's going to be successful any man's going to be the drag except we got the fade out against cover three just motion this guy in put him on a streak you can put the a route on a drag um for you know just for a check down but the x route here is going to get right up the seam and be an easy one play touchdown just as long as you have a little more speed i don't really think john brown's fast enough um, necessarily, I mean, I think I also want to leave the A route doing what he's doing for cover three against cover two. I want to put him on a drag, but ultimately, um, this is going to be the best look as you can see right there. I mean, he got right at the seam. I just get an inaccurate pass because you're not going to have a ton of pass pro. The biggest issue is you don't have a ton of protection here. Um, but you can see if you get protection, if you drop back enough, you can get an easy one play touchdown against cover three. Against cover two, it's the same setup. Just gonna drag the A route this time. Any number of options here. Against cover two, it's gonna be the same setup. We're just gonna drag the A route this time. And the Y route is going to be the play. Now you can see he gets open wide outside of that particular uh, formation. So it's definitely the glitches against cover two. I'll do that again. Like I said, this here is easy because you know it's just instant. He's just instantly open and it's just a sprint down the sideline. If you got a guy like Ruggs, you're gonna be stealing some very big gains. Next up, we have the jailbreak screen. This play's gonna be best against cover three and cover four. Just kind of have to wait till your blocker gets out and gets on the uh, the corner. Although there, the other blocker didn't get there, but it's still gonna be a best you know good play against cover three, cover four. Like I said, well, if we wait till that that's till 74 gets out in space, and also when I have my fastest guy out here, we have our best opportunity for a big play. Except we have the quarterback draw. If you get spread looks, which you typically will because of all the um, additional receivers in the empty backfield, you can always have a run threat, which is a quarterback draw. Now you gotta be careful because quarterbacks do fumble. That was the first time I did that and he fumbled right away. But if you see the defense is too spread, if they're not respecting the fact that the quarterback can run, or if you have a mobile quarterback, this is something you can do quite often and have success. Next up, we have the Z under. Against man or zone, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna motion this guy and put the A route on a drag. The Y route will get open against a lot of different coverages. Typically gonna get open mostly against um, zone coverages, cover two and cover three. Uh, the drag is really just your check down and your man beater. So let's go and do that again. 
said any zone coverage, the Y route's gonna pretty much be there. If not, like I said, the drag routes are checked down. The streak is really there just to pull back coverage. Let's do that one more time. Looks like we're gonna have that corner route that time. I don't know if that was a cover three or cover four, but it's gonna work against any zone. You don't even have to make that motion, to be honest with you. Here it looks like we have that cover two. Like I said, the motion is not 100% necessary. I just find it helps them get off the line. It gets them a better release. Next up, we get the halfback off tackle. This is a good outside run, especially against man coverage, because there won't always be a cornerback on the right side. It's one of the better running plays from this formation. As you can see, we just get some really good blocking. Uh, to the edge, so definitely one of the better outside run plays to go along with the inside run play, which is the gut. Looks like we get the halfback slip screen. It's another play. It's really, you know, to me, it's not necessarily about um, the screen itself, as you have this good flat beater, this good taper out on the other side. So cover three or cover four, you'll have that option. Uh, but the screen obviously is is going to be one of your. Uh, it's really just about the two running backs. That's really your read here, left to right. Next up, we have the inside zone split. So it's just one of the better inside run plays. Um, if you're, you know, this isn't to me the best running scheme necessarily, but you have a lot of good options when it comes to this particular play here. I could go any number of directions. It's just a good, it's just a, the, the best inside run in the formation. Next up, we got the PAF slide. It's a good cover to play as is. The X route here will just get open outside. As you can see the, the B route really pulls the safety across or makes them hesitate long enough that you can make a good play to the outside. Work even better if I run to the open side of the field because I can probably get a good catch and run. But at the end of the day, you can see that this is not really, I mean, this outside route just basically gets outside release. And then you can see you can basically bullet and pass lead to the sideline for a very easy play. Could also streak the B route, but I don't think that that's necessary. As you can see, it's, it works out regardless as that safety is completely out of position. You get a very big play. The running backs are good under cover three and cover four zone, and the A routes are really good man beater. Now there, that was a, uh, a cover two. As you can see, he's not gonna really get open against that, but you just have to keep an eye on the crossers. I typically like to play the crossers in the same direction. There you can see they drop back a little bit more. We get a very easy play. Like I said, the tight end coming across the center is your man beater for the most part. Next up, we got the red zone halfback corner. So any man coverage, the running back, is going to be a very big play is that linebackers just don't do a very good job covering. I don't know why I didn't catch that, but you can see he's getting open. He's getting outside release. So let's go ahead and let's, like I said, I can just motion him out to get him a little bit quicker into that flat. And then you can see we're just not getting any catches. The running back's a very good route against man. I can motion him out if I want. Get a little bit of a a little bit of a cheat here, but you can see that these linebackers are not going to be able to cover that. So I find it's best to keep in the backfield because I don't have a ton of plays where I motion out the running back. But you can see how that's just, it's a really easy completion against any man coverage. Next up out of the gun split twins, we have the Texas. This plays really a bunch of man beating routes. The A route is the only route that doesn't really beat man. Uh, but the RB route, I mean, I probably want to put a fullback. It's a bunch of man beating routes. Uh, the B route here, that zig is going to be one of your first reads. The uh, the corner route's a really good route, uh, and the fullback route's a really good route. Now with the fullback, you want to make sure you put a running back in. I didn't do that, but typically that's going to be um, a better play uh, if you have a little more speed. You could also motion that guy out so that he's not getting in the way like the, the linebacker kind of gets in the way coming back. Um, as you can see, I mean, I could do that outside here and have a lot of success as well. As you can see, I'm having much more success. Even with a foot, look at them breaking tackles. But like I said, they're, they're all man-beating routes. That's the most important thing at the end of the day. We'll go with that X route one time. Like I said, that's the most critical timing throw would be that. As you can see, I have to throw it once he gets outside. It looks like he's covered up to that point. But pretty much all these routes be man. Next up, I spread wide flex with the inside zone. This is just a good inside run. Uh, and then you have the, the wide receiver jet for the outside. So it's really, these two plays play off of one another. If you have inside space or you have lacking, you're lacking a linebacker, you just take it inside. If they're bunched inside, you just take it outside with this with this jet sweep. It's really that simple. 
Next up, we have the Jet Touch Pass. You're really just counting the box. If you have no, if you have one linebacker in the box, you switch over to the inside zone. As you can see there's really nothing there, so you can just take it inside. And if there's two linebackers in the box, then you take it outside with the Jet Touch Pass. So here we have the two linebackers in the box. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna run this. Take it outside. It's really that simple. The running back becomes a very good blocker. Uh, I wish I'd have my tight end running that, but he is my third receiver right now. So just make sure you put your fastest receiver at that spot. Once again, no um, tight end or no linebacker in the box. So we're just going to go. We're going to take it to the linebacker side. Although he didn't get blocked at all, which is you know it's going to happen sometimes. But ultimately, that's the best way to run this scheme. It's kind of a two-play scheme. Here's another play. Once again, two linebackers in the box. I'm just going to try to take it wide. Like I said, put your, I'd rather have Henry Ruggs running that play, but you can see I'm still having success even with Darren Waller. Next up, we have the Shock H option. It's really just, just a good cover two-play streak. The B route put the X route on a smoke, and the Y route will get open uh, outside the cover two. It's really that simple. You can also have success against uh, man cover two, as long as you have a big enough speed advantage, but I'm not going to have that with Waller. So you can see right here, we get a very easy uh, play against cover two zone. But like I said, if you have speed and he beats the release, you can beat cover two as well, cover two man. Next up, we have the bench. When it comes to the bench, these routes will beat, you know, man coverages won't have a lot of success against bench. So basically the Y route or the X route will have a lot of success. You can get more success if you try to stack to one side rather than running both sides. Like if I motion over Kittle or a Yuki here and just put them on a streak, that typically will give me even more success when it comes to uh, these concepts. So I'm going to cover four now, which I didn't mean to do. So we'll just throw that ball away. But uh, we've got to go back to cover two. I mean, really any man coverage, but cover two especially because you have the safeties on each side and you want to be able to pull those guys back. I mean, I, I find that doing it with a zig is even better since I'm trying to isolate man coverages. You can see the zig route got really wide open, but I'm going for the bigger plays. You can see right there, you did get a little bit of separation. Like I said, it's not the best man concept, but the same setup through any zone coverage will be successful. So we're going to do that with a zone. Typically against zone, I like to flat the X route instead of having him in that out route because that'll pull that cornerback down even quicker. And you can see here, I mean, he's getting a lot of pressure or a lot of press off of that, uh, off of that, um, uh, I don't know if it was a linebacker or what, but you can see it's still a very big play regardless. Go to cover three, do the same setup. Cover three, you can leave that X or you can flat them. It doesn't matter. I mean, they're, they're both going to work and have success. You see the flat pulls it down a lot quicker, though. And like I said, that you know, pretty much any zone, these 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 corner routes really have a lot of success, success against zone. Next up, we have the drive corner. It's another really good play against cover four quarters. As you can see, it kind of just glitches out the safety. It's going to have a lot of success against any man similar style of play. I find it's best to motion. I'll block the running back. The running back would be good against cover three and cover four because it's a flat beating route. But against um, man coverages like man cover two, motion over the B route, put him on a streak. And the Y route here can have a lot of success over the top of that, um, which is a play. I put this out you know, multiple years in a row. It's a really explosive play against man coverages and against um, cover four. Against man cover two, just streak the X route. I'm sorry, not man cover two, zone cover two, whatever. Streak the X route, same result, another one play touchdown. So against man, man cover one, man cover two, cover two zone, uh, and cover four quarters is a one play touchdown to the same route. Um, like I said, I can show off some of these other routes. These drags are pretty good. The X route's pretty good. You see right here, I mean, that's that's a, that's a tough one. You know, it gets cover two man because they typically cover outside. They, get, they don't like to give you outside release when it comes to cover two man. I guess cover one, it's a little bit of a different story. Cover one is the one coverage that I feel like this Y route it covers this wire up pretty good, but you can still you still have if you have a speed advantage, you can still make that happen. But I don't have a ton of speed with with Samuel. Except we have the flanker drive. It's a good play against any man coverage. Your two routes on the left side should both get open, uh, and then the B route is also a very um, you know very very glitchy uh, uh, you know any man coverage you know coverage beater. So we're going to do cover that was cover two, so we cover one. I said the B route once again. Gets wide open. I mean, the cover. I don't even know where his <laughs> where the cornerback was. That's how far out of the play he was there. Um, you could probably benefit from motioning because the the way that these routes um, work, they seem to get they seem to cross up pretty quickly. So you can probably benefit 
for motioning this guy over here. Like I said, once again, this B route here is just, that's really the, the caveat or the best play to run when it comes to this, or the best route to use, I should say, when it comes to man. Next up, we have the PA cross against cover two. If you just streak everybody, the, uh, the B route here will have success in the cover two gap. And if you have a lot of catch and run space, which I didn't have, you can get an easy one play touchdown there. Against man coverage, the X route is a good route. Once again, he'll get outside. It takes a little while, but you can see he gets outside and you have another big play. So those are your, you know, your right. The B route, cover two. The X route, cover one. Even the Y route's a good man beater, but I'm not really going to spend too much time on that. It's just a good check down. I'm not going to change that too much. Cover three X, I got to move the ball over for cover three. I forgot to mention against cover four quarters, if you motion this guy out, he will have success. You just isolate him with a cover four corner. This is cover four match, not cover four. Look at it right there. He's getting triple teamed, and he still gets open. My worst receiver is getting triple teamed and gets open against cover four quarters. Both routes can have success, really. I'll, I'll do the same thing with the B route. Like I said, even with that short field, you'll see he isolates it and still gets it open. So just as long as you have a decent or decent receiver, that's why I went around a short side there. So against cover three, got to remember to put it in cover three. Go ahead and do that one more time. Like I said, that wire out there, once that guy spreads, once that cornerback spreads, you can beat that right at the seam. A little, a little bit more speed would be nice, but that's as good as I have it. Do that with the other side too. But we'll do that again. Exact same setup, just a slightly different look, and the same result. As you can see, you know, one play touchdown to both sides at the cover three seam. Against cover four drop, we'll just play sticks. Switch to the other side because the X route's the route. Block my running back. And we're going to have that same result with the same route against cover four. So really any zone covers, that's going to have success. Go ahead and we'll do that against cover three because when I say any zone, I really didn't check cover three. So I'll do that one more time. I said, I mean, obviously this this these cover three doesn't cover anything because I, I the one play touchdowns there and the shorter routes there, so that covers nothing. Except we have a slot post. It's a really good cover three play. Just streak your slot receivers, motion out the X route, and that Y route. It's going to be a very big play because it just creates a huge amount of space. So, you know, it's it's a big scene play. It's not always going to be one play touchdown. A little bit more speed would be helpful. But ultimately, this is a very big play against, um, you know, pretty much against any uh, any cover three. As long as you do this setup. Just streak everybody. Running back's a good check down. Picks up out of the gun tight. we got the Z spot. It's got a lot of good man coverage plays as well. I like the X route and the A route. I'll put the B route on a streak. The A route here, uh, basically just, you know, once he gets outside, it's a very good man being route. You can shorten that too, and it's even better if you're on like a, you know, if you can smart route it like a five yard depth or something like that. It's typically really good. I just know that from gameplay. I can't do it here in practice. Then the X route, like I said, it's a really good player. Although that was still quarters because I forgot to switch it over. <laughs> but that's a really good man being route as well. As you can see, it still works even against quarters. Let's go nice pick. A man covers this time. The Y route should have success also. The uh, the corner route, which, you know, had success against the, you know, this is one of the better man beating routes as well. But once again, didn't quite get the accuracy. I got a rookie quarterback out there. But you can see that beats man also. A lot, a lot of good man being routes against cover three and cover four. The running back is really the best way to go. As you can see, nothing really covers him in the flats because there's nothing really there. So you really have success against a lot of different things. You also have success against Tampa 2. All you got to do is streak the B route. And it's really, once again, running back and tight end. Although, if the running back's there, just take the running back because the tight end doesn't do a great job. So, basically, any zone coverage, the running back's a good play. And all these other routes are really good man beaters. Except we have the flood. All I have to do here is streak the X route. 
motion out. I mean, you don't have to do any of these motions, but I'm gonna motion out the B route and put them all on streaks, the B route and the A route. The running back is a good check down. You, can, you don't have to keep that check down, but it's a good check down against cover three and cover four. But we're really gonna try to attack the deep route anyway, so you can streak everybody. You don't have to, you know, as you can see right here, this X route gets gone right up the seam. The throw was even a little behind, but you can see it's a very big play against cover three once again. And this concept really works against anything, random anything. As you can see, my right sides, the drags, those are going to be your check downs. Still finds best to motion them out just to kind of spread them out. And then if you streak the X route, you're going to have um, a lot of success against pretty much any zone coverage. As you can see right there, we, uh, we I probably could have went to the deeper route, but I just took the check down. This play here, all you want to do is streak the X route and streak the B route. Against cover three, uh, the X route is going to be gone really quickly. As you can see, the cornerback has to react. The cornerbacks react really poorly this year to uh, the to the um, the wheel routes that are being run here. I really think that probably either side would be gone. To be honest with you, like I could probably go the opposite direction there. As you can see, we're going to one play touchdown against uh, you know both sides of this defense. So it doesn't really matter. Any cover three, both of these plays are going to, you know, both of these streaks are going to roast it. Against cover two, we're just going to do the same adjustment. We're going to isolate one side. It's going to put the B route on a drag. Because I'm going to try to get to the uh, the Y route here. As you can see, the drag didn't even really pull the cornerback down, but it's a good check down. Against cover two, if we motion across Waller here, put him on a flat, block the running back, streak the X route, the Y route here is going to be a very big play outside. Once he gets past the cornerback, because the safety is going to be nowhere to be found. Next up, we have the mesh spot. Against cover three, just streak the X route. No other adjustments needed. And uh, the X route gets gone pretty instantly up the seam against pretty much any cover three. It's a very explosive play. Next up, we have the dagger. I'm just going to put the A route on a streak, put the Y route on a drag. I would say the X route, you can put on a, you can put on a streak too, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, we're basically just working these uh, these crossers. I mean, they're going to get open. One of these, either the drag or the uh, the deep crosser is going to get open against just about any man or zone in the game. I find that the RB route is really good against cover three. As you can see right here, a lot of times he'll get open uh, under the flats, but he's probably the, the secondary read on the play. I would say mostly it's just the crossers. So it doesn't really matter what you're looking at, man or zone. The crossers will have a lot of success. Here we have that man coverage. We said that wire out or the deep crosser is going to beat that. And we just basically run this all game. It's a very good bread and butter play. Next up, we got the double in sale. The running back's really hard to cover in the flat. As you see there, that guy gets a press on the tight end. This is really, you know, mostly about that particular route there. I find that you can motion across one of these receivers Put them on either a slant or a streak, and that'll help get the uh, tight end open as well. I like to do the slant the most. As you can see here, we got a man coverage, but Waller's just going to poop on that. So, you know, we just have, uh, it's really about the high-low between the corner route and the running back on a play like this. Next up, we got the inside zone. It's just the best run play in this formation. Um, I find that that receiver does a really good job of cleaning out the linebackers. You can see he comes over and just blasts them. Uh, typically, this is going to be best against, like, they're out to cover four. Still had a really good run. This is one of the better inside zone runs as far as blocking goes. Probably the best play in the formation, not just the best pass play, but the best play overall, as it just does a really good job of picking up that linebacker. Next up, we have the levels Y sale. It's not a play, I'll go random. The RB route's really going to be best against uh, cover three and cover four, but if you have a speed advantage, I mean, you can even beat man coverage. You can see right there, it still got out enough into the flat. That was a man, though. Uh, but ultimately, the RB route's really best against zone coverage. As you can see, that zone chuck it really just gets that guy off of his spot to the point where the running back just gets open instantly. Now, the, the check downs, like the B route and the, and the Y route and all that stuff, I mean, the the the, po the corner route does a really good job of getting open against most zones, especially if you have a good tight end like I have here. But ultimately, I mean, these are, you know, this is all about the flat and all about the corner route. The, the, the crossers will make good check downs, but it's really more about these two routes on the right. Next up, we got the inside zone. Next, this is just the best run play in the formation. Um, you know, it's a consistent three to five yard run if, if at, at worst. I mean, right here, you really want to run this when they when the defense is really spread. But you can see if you get that second level blocking, you can really have some explosive runs. So definitely the most important run play in this formation. Next up, we got the stick. So I'll just put the A route on streak. And once this uh, B route gets past the cornerback, just bullet. 
pass lead to the sideline, and you have a very big play. The Y route's good against cover three, and the X route's good against man. Except we got the PA post shot. Against random play, I just put the A route on a streak, the Y route on a drag. That's all I really have to do. This play here is going to be a big play. One of the, either the drag or the, uh, the crosser over the top will get open against anything man or zone. The streak's job is really just to pull back uh, any coverage, any unwanted zone coverage. Right here, we got that zone, we got that man coverage again. Although I don't know why I got a bad pass or an incomplete pass. So let's do that again. Said man coverage, zone coverage, this route here will have success and it can be a very successful explosive play. Next up we have the stick. I'm just gonna streak the B route, that's all I really have to do. I'll, I'll streak the A route too, but ultimately uh, this is just another cover two play where I'm just gonna throw it to the, the X route once it gets past the cornerback and then you can see we can have a really big play um, you know, outside the safety. The, the most important part, run it from the sideline just to get the most catch and run space possible, but the most important part is the bullet and the pass lead away. If you throw it too early, you can see right there, you can give the guy a play because I, I just didn't time it. You really have to watch when he passes this cornerback um, if I go to the replay, which is not going to let me do, but you really have to watch, let's do it again live, just watch the quarterback, You're, that's really all there is to it, once he gets past him enough, like I said right here, he slows down, gets into his back pedal, like I said, that throw to the sideline too much is what's causing it to be a short throw, but um, let's go and do this one more time, like I said, you can also flat the wire out just for a quicker reaction time to the flats, uh, you can see like the quarterback there will react, and you can see this is just, you know, this is like pitch and catch, like I said, it's all timing, it's all based off of when you throw the ball, but it's a really big play. Except we have the fake screen wheel. It's another good cover to play. No adjustments needed. The wire out here is just going to be a very big play outside. Um, this is really meant to be a cover two play for the most part. As you can see, we get a very easy one play touchdown there. Against man coverage, you can see it just goes completely around the uh, the press, uh, which is something that uh, you're not going to see a lot at a lot of, out of a lot of different routes. This is man cover two. He just basically gets gets right around that. And then you can see we have another big play uh, where there's typically not a ton of big plays against cover two man. Against cover three, I'm just going to motion this guy over and put everybody on streaks except for the B route and put him on a fade because this linebacker wants to come over and uh, basically try to jam him off that route. So you can see if I put him on a fade, he won't get jammed. If I leave him on a streak, he will though. So let's go and do that again. Watch the, uh, the B route, as you see he's on a streak now, so he will get uh, check, you know, and it'll basically slow everything down to the point where he's now getting covered. So a fade is a key to that play and being successful. So let's go, let's do that again. Like I said, just put him on a fade, just so he gets that outside release, he'll actually run right past that linebacker who was attempting to catch him off guard, and we get a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up we have the inside zone. This is the best run play in this formation. You can see a lot of times that receiver will come over and seal that linebacker. So if he does that properly, it's definitely a big help. Sometimes the, uh, the, the, the guard will get off to that level too. But you can see it's a very successful inside run, just as long as you're looking at a favorable defense, which is either matching or less. Next up out of the trailway flex with the PA crossers. The tight end's a good man coverage beater. That's really the only um, thing that makes this play different than a lot of other plays that I put out where basically, you know, this is a good man being racked, especially if you have a good tight end. But ultimately, I want to run this against random plays and just put the tight end on a streak, put the wire around a drag, and these uh, crossers will get open against just about any defense. Uh, you just basically watch, I mean, the drag and the, and the deep crosser will both pretty much get open. So you're just basically watching the high-low routes. Man or zone, doesn't really matter. You're just watching the, the deep crosser and the drag. Uh, as you can see here, I mean, I accidentally hit the wrong button, but they were both open. If I go to the replay, you can see that both of the receivers were open. It doesn't really matter the defense. Let's go and let's do that again. I like to block the running back too because I don't want, the, I don't want that play action to get in the way. Here we go once again. It looks like a couple of quarters uh, matching principles. It still gets open. It doesn't really matter. These crossers kill all that. Next up, we got the inside zone. Just one of the better run plays. I find it's probably best to even out the formation and shift one of these tight ends over. Um, so that you can get a little bit better blocking, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's just a good run play to mix in. 
Uh, nothing too crazy. It's just an inside zone. I find that if you don't have that extra blocker, though, a lot of times you won't get the advantage that you need to, to get a consistent run. Next up, we have the Jet Pass Fake Zone. This is a pass play, not a run play, so you will get a completion. Uh, and it's best against any cover three or cover four because you can see the cornerbacks drop back immediately. So something like this is going to be best to attack any type of zone coverage where the cornerbacks drop back. If you watch the cornerbacks on this next play, you can see they drop back immediately. Cover twos, man coverages will react a little bit quicker down towards the box. So it's something that you best use against those type of defenses. Next up, we have the mesh sit. Against cover three, you just want to put the B route on a streak. And uh, I say streak the Y route too, just to keep that... Uh, that safety over there because if you have a fast enough tight end you can get a very explosive player even a one play touchdown against cover three you can see the cornerback slows down to let the tight end get past uh, because he really has to react to the running back route so watching this like I said the second he gets right about here and he flips his hips I could throw that ball right now because that cornerback can't flip his hips and get back I probably threw it a little bit late to be a one play touchdown as you can see I'm, I'm just the timing you know that's the most important thing because now the safety's reacting so really watch for that cornerback to flip his hips and turn around let's do that again so once that cornerback plants his feet bomb it up because the safety hasn't reacted yet and you have an easy one play touchdown against cover three as long as you have a fast enough tight end next up we got the double post i would say just put your b route on a drag a more traditional drag and i'm really just going to work the a route and the b route one of them two should be open pretty much every single time against man or zone you're just reading the high lows when it comes to zone you can leave the route doing what it's doing. I just find it's a little bit better. Like I said right there, he's going to get open. It's Darren Waller. He's going to get open regardless. But I find the drag is just a little bit of a better check down. So let's go let's do that one more time. Like I said, we're really just watching the tight ends. And if the higher one's there, I'll take it. I could have took the drag or I could have took the big route. Obviously, I went the big route there. So you get a very easy play. It's just a good play to mix in with this run scheme. Next up, we got the PA post dig shot. So one play touchdown against cover four uh, drop with no adjustments. The X route here um, just gets inside the free safety and we get an easy one play touchdown as long as you bullet and pass lead away from that free safety. So we're just waiting for this receiver to get inside right about here and I can bullet and pass lead away because he's well beyond the strong safety who has to basically take over in coverage. And that's why you see I'm already loading up the second I see him cross that safety's face. Next up, we have the shock H option. I'm just going to put the A route on a streak, put the B route on a smoke. And the RB route is going to be a very big play outside of cover two zones. Now, I don't know if I really have the speed that I want. Uh, to make a bigger catch and run and also probably get more if I move the ball to the sideline But you can see it's pretty much a single replay just to the RB route uh, the, the B route and the smoke just pulls the cornerback down and the RB route or the A route pulls the safety in and the RB route should be wide open to the outside Next up we got the slot option It's a good man coverage play to the sluggo As you can see this uh, this route here just does a really good job of uh, beating man coverage, man zero, man cover one. It's not a guarantee. I would also say it's best to probably block the tight end. Um, but this is a man play. The Y route, the B route, all those routes will do a good job. I'll go ahead and I'll work my check down zig here to the running back. You can see that's a dirty route. So it's a very good man beating play. Um, although the sluggo really only works against man cover zero and man cover one, a lot of these other routes like the B route and the Y route work against anything. The double outs though, both of these routes on the outside are both very hit. So let's go ahead and let's pick that. Like I said, I'll start off with man cover one. Um, it'll have a similar effect against man cover two, it's just not going to be as good as it against cover one. But these outside routes here, it's really just a pitch and catch throw. It's all about timing. If you throw it too early, it's a problem. If you throw it too late, it's a problem. But if you throw it once he gets outside of the cornerback, the cornerbacks pretty much just give up space. So I'm, I'm bullet passing and passing outside every time as well. That's something that you're going to have to do. But ultimately, both of these receivers, I'll move the ball back to the center here just to show you. Both of these receivers run the exact same route and will have the exact same effect. As you can see here, once again, he just gets separation and the cornerback just lags behind. So it's a very easy play. Next up, we got the mesh. Just going to streak the X route. That's pretty much it. Uh, and you're going to have a lot of success against any man or zone, really. But the B route here is going to be best uh, mostly against cover two, cover three, cover four. That'll pretty much get open against all of them. Uh, 
Uh, you can give yourself any number of check downs with the tight end. He's not really doing a ton. But you can see how this place is having success. These are man coverages as being too, by the way. We're having success with that as well. But it's really just a zone concept. The X route is just to pull back receivers. And they pretty much just working the, uh, the... Wow, he's really having success there. He's beating Tyron Matthew too. But the X route just pulls everything back. And then you're playing the RB route versus the uh, the B route. You can motion this fullback out as well. You can also put a running back at the fullback spot. All these things will have success um, for you know better success. You can see right there, I get five yards before I even have to trap field. If I had a running back there, it'd be an easier catch and run. Against man coverage, obviously these drags are going to have a lot of success. This is really the only difference between this and the spot play. As you can do the exact same setup, I've blocked my running back now, but the exact same setup as the previous play, just streak this guy back. This B route here though, um, to me, it doesn't have the same depth as the spot play, so it's not as good. Looks like we got the PA tight end corner. Against cover three, just streak the X route and motion out the B route. That's all you really have to do. Block your fullback if you want to, but ultimately this X route here, you're just going to get open right outside of it as long as you bullet and pass lead away for free safety. It's a very quick one play touchdown as well. You don't even have to make that motion. You can just basically put that guy on that route. So I'm going to do it again. Motion out Edwards. Put the X route on streak. That will hold that cornerback down enough that you can basically just pull it past it away from the safety and be a very explosive one by touchdown. You also have a very good man beater here in the B route, which, you know, he'll beat just about anything, just about uh, any man coverage when he, when he comes back inside. And then the drag also, and this particular set, the drag is going to have a lot of success underneath as well. The tight end's also a very good play against man coverage. Um, although there, I probably threw that a little bit early, but you can see you can have success against pretty much every, you know, every man, every route in this play pretty much has a man beater to it, except for the fullback. Next up, we have the stretch. Against man, you're gonna wanna run as is against zone, you're gonna wanna flip it and run it behind the receivers. There we have a blitzer, so it's gonna be an even easier read, but you can see but behind the receivers, I finally get the best blocking. Unless it's a man where there's no cornerback outside the right side tight end. Otherwise, flip it, run it to the short side. Um, although there, he did a pretty good job of uh, cutting that off. So there are certain covers that cover two zone. I wouldn't say running this is a good idea. Here, we'll do it again. Looks like we have a cover three safety in the box, but I'm just gonna take what I can get. So ultimately, this is definitely the best run play in this formation. And the other play would be the halfback stretch. We're gonna do that again. Like I said, this here, this is there's no real gaps. This is a really easy read. There's no gaps inside. The best thing that I could do here is definitely gonna be the stretch. I have a cover three, so I have a safety right behind that outside linebacker. So I don't really like it running it strong side here. So I'm typically gonna, once again, you can flip it. If you go against something like this, where you see you have, you have uh, you know, the, the safety's in, in the box and you have the, uh, the linebacker there, it's gonna be best to try to flip it. And you're gonna hope that your fullback can get out in front of you and basically make that block. And you can see right there, it works out pretty well. The, the stretch, in my opinion, it's not necessarily the better of the two plays, but it's still a, a good counter. This is a perfect look for just a straight stretch because that tight end has outside contain over that defensive end or linebacker. Typically, it's in this particular situation, it's going to be a defensive end, uh, and he's basically going to act as a double team. If he doesn't get off that double team, it might be a little bit of an issue because then the safety and the cornerback are going. There was only one blocker left, the receiver. That's the only thing. I probably would, uh, you know, if if Kittle can get off that double block and get down to the second level, get to the safety, it'd be great. But Otherwise, my expectation for this play is probably going to be a little bit less than it normally would be. And I probably would have had some there. I was just sprinting too much. One of the better passing plays out of this particular uh, formation is definitely the PA tight end leak. Last year, it was one of my favorite plays. I think it was one of my top five um, passing plays towards the end of Madden 21 because of the uh, the patches made it really glitchy. It's not really glitchy like that anymore, but let's go and let's pick that. Then we're going to go, uh, we're going to start off with cover two like we typically do. Then we'll work our way back to cover three, cover four, just to show you guys all the setups that you can run. Cover two is pretty bad though. I mean, this is something that they're definitely going to gonna have to patch some of these deeper zones. As you're going to see, I'm not going to have to do too much here to have success against cover two. Uh, I mean, you can run it just like this. I find it's best to put the, uh, the B route there. I mean, you have 
a lot of crossing routes. So you can run this play like this and just have success in a lot of different ways. I mean, the A route's really going to be the read. You can see he's wide open. But I find that you can have a lot more success and get this guy open more if you just put this B route on a streak. But to be honest, I expect this should work even after they patch this. I would imagine this is going to get patched because you can see this B route here. He almost just runs right past the safety, which is ridiculous. I mean, <laughs> it's something that the zone coverages are definitely a problem right now. It's something that they owned up to in the beta. Uh, but for now, this is pretty unacceptable. If I throw this a little bit earlier, look how this safety just doesn't react. And he just lets this be right. I mean, if this was Tyreek Hill or something, he'd be absolutely gone. And we almost have, you know, back-to-back -back touchdowns. So that's something that if you have a super speedy receiver, you might be able to get away with for now until they patch it. But until then, I mean, the A route's definitely the play. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to just rock it to this wide open tight end because just nobody's really getting covered out here. So, you know, two, two things to take from this. Number one, don't run cover two. It's complete trash. And uh, number two, if you do run cover two, I mean, there's just, like I said, nothing's really getting covered. I mean, even the even the fullbacks pretty wide open uh, under the underneath if I wanted to, but this tight end is definitely going to be the play. So against cover three, we definitely have another um, good setup here where um, you know this play here can be very explosive against cover three. Cover three is probably one of the best defenses to run right now, even though it still isn't great. Uh, but if you motion out this A route and put the B route and the X route on streaks. Number one, you'll have a good check down with the fullback. But number two, this B route here, it just, for whatever reason, like I said, these guys just don't react. And it just splits the cover three safety and cornerback, which it really shouldn't be that easy. You know what I mean? To go up the middle. We'll go to the replay just to show you what happened there. Like I said, one of my biggest issues is the reaction time of these. Uh, I mean, it looks like they should be able to close on this, but they spread so far apart and the reaction time is so slow that you can really throw it right up the seam and get a really easy one play touchdown against cover three. I mean, that's something that uh, I'll run it again. Let's see. Maybe we'll have a little bit. I mean, that was a little tighter than I'm expecting. If they just up the reaction time, um, they probably can, uh, you know, can fix this pretty quickly. But, um, you know, for now, this is a play that definitely works. Once again, safety, especially, I don't know where that safety is going, does not react to the ball, uh, which is not really necessarily, you know, a concerning because in all reality, I mean, they'd have to be on, like some psychic defender level to really react to the ball. So that's not, you know, maybe they're trying to go for realism this year. And I'm not necessarily mad about it, but like I said, this this is a kind of an easy play. And then like I said, the fullback is open underneath, which is a really good check down. Nothing really gets covered underneath. The underneath zone coverages are pretty terrible. So you can hit that fullback all game if you're not feeling comfortable to throw that ball up. You can run this play, um, you know, a, a number of different ways. And you're going to see, too, the A route's going to even be open, like the tight end. If you wait long enough, he gets open to the sideline. You can, you can slip that in there. So, you know, I've run it to the sideline as well, which I think is important. But other than that, you can see how easy this play is. So last but not least, cover four quarters. One of my favorite defenses from last year is also, um, it's really a good one play touchdown against cover four. Uh, you really only have to make one adjustment. So we're just going to pick any random cover for a drop. All you really have to do to make this play work is motion this B route across. And now you're going to have a one play touchdown to the X route. The X route, once he gets inside of this safety, the safety won't be able to keep up. And you just basically are throwing it up for an easy one play touchdown run and score. The run play that I like the most is definitely the power O. Here I have that, but I also have the better play, which is the defensive end on the left side is spread really far from the defensive tackle. So that is really what I want because the, the power O is going to be the better play of the two, in my opinion. So all you really have to do is switch, pick that play, and then flip it with the right stick. Now, you can see right here, it looks like it's aiming right at that defensive end, but ultimately that defensive end is going to get blown out of the play uh, by the blocking. You could also, I mean, a lot of times the stretch is not bad to the weak side, but that's typically if that defensive end is inside a little bit. So like I said, flip the play with the right stick. That's all I'm really going to do. And you're going to see how that defensive end, he's going to take himself out of that play. He's going to get washed out of that play typically by either the tackle or the fullback or sometimes even the guard and then um, that's pretty much how the play is going to run i'm going to run right between the defensive end the defensive tackle where there's a huge lane and you're going to see how this play just sets up perfectly like right there now there i almost over pursue as you can see we get a pretty good run there what i get like 15 yards before anybody even touched me and that's basically the point of this play it's a really good play when it comes to um, inside runs like i said i treat it like an inside run even though it looks like the diagram is kind of like an outside run i don't really treat it that way i treat it like an inside run right here you can see how this defensive end gets washed out of the place the fullback who makes the play there as you can see he just basically lets him take him
himself out of the way and he just carries him out of play and then I just basically have a really easy run right behind the pulling guard who then becomes my lead blocker. He basically becomes, um, you know, like the fullback would have been. But ultimately, I, I mean, this is something where, um, you know, I almost over pursued him. That was my, that's what I was saying. You have to wait for that blocker to come around. I got a 97 speed running back. Next up, we have the Y post. Against man coverage, this X route here is going to be a really good play just as long as you wait for him to get outside the cornerback bullet pass lead to the sideline. The A route would be a pretty good check down as well over the middle. As you can see, it's a good man beating route, but ultimately the user is probably going to be covering that. It's also a good play against cover two zone. Just streak the A route, motion out the B route. And they really just have to wait for him to get past the cornerback because the cornerback will react to the check and release and you just basically throw this up outside, bullet pass it to the sideline, have a very big play. Next up we have the fullback dive. This play is going to be best um, if your defensive opponent is spreading the line. Also you want to put a running back typically at the fullback spot. I'm not typically going to run this with a fullback. But it's a very good inside run, especially in short yard situations. You typically can pick up, you know, I'm picking up close to five. So I would say anything less than that would be an easy gain. Except by the strong tight, we got the half back stretch. It's another good play against, uh, you know, off coverages like cover three, cover four. Here we have a little bit, you know, the, the cornerbacks are definitely playing far off. So I could run this to the, to the weak side. I could run it to the strong side. You can see there's a lot of opportunity as long as the cornerbacks aren't playing down lower like in a cover two. Next up, we got the fullback dive. So another good play, um, just a short yards run. Typically want to put a running back at the fullback spot, but this will have success if you need to pick up any short gains on uh, your opponent doesn't close their gaps. As you can see, we're going to have, you know, they're actually kind of ran into that guy. Uh, but for the most part, we're just going to have um, a really quick, you know, short yards run. Next up, we have the halfback power. O. Oh. I typically want to flip this. The more spread the defensive alignment, the better. Uh, and then basically just treat it like almost like a counterplay. Just kind of leave that that lead blocker coming around. Typically does a good job. Um, it's going to be best if the uh, defensive end is out really wide, which typically people want to try to maintain the outside edge. So this is going to be a perfect counter to that. Here we have a blitzer. This will probably be a good look because the blitzer will probably take himself out of the play. But realistically, that's something where you know you, you want to. This is going to be best against. A um, little bit more vanilla defense is necessarily blitzing is not necessarily the best way to run this. So here we don't have any gaps. I'm going to run it anyway. As I said, that defensive end typically takes himself out of the play. And then, you know, you're pulling guards. got to block somebody. Uh, typically, the faster your guard, the better. There he came around. Really didn't do much at all. But you can see if you have holes, um, it's just going to create those holes, wide those holes even bigger. Kind of like an 0-1 trap play. Next app out of the iPhone wing, we have the PA boot flow. This is going to be best if you put a fast running back or tight end at the uh, the fullback spot. So I would go ahead, I'd put somebody like, I don't even know who the fastest running backs are, but we'll go and we'll just pick this guy. And then we'll go with the PA boot flow. All I'm really going to do is motion this guy out, just get him a little bit of a head start. If it's a cover three, that will typically give him enough space that he'll get open in the flat for an easy catch and run. Uh, same thing with cover four. Cover four, th or cover four match. I'm sorry, cover four regular. So that's going to be your uh, your best bet. But you also have some pretty good crossing routes and check downs when it comes to uh, man coverage and stuff like that. As you can see right here, I mean, that's he probably shouldn't have been able to get past that defense. But you're really just reading those two high-low routes over the middle with the fullback. So I'm really starting with the fullback and working my way back to the A route and then the B route and whatnot. The X route, if it's a man coverage, the X route's really the route. As you can see right there, I don't know what happened there. I mean, I got sacked before I could even turn around. But you could easily turn the uh, the running back into just a pass block so that you don't have that problem. But it's always an issue in Madden 22 to run, um, you know, any pass play under center can be a bit of a problem because you just can't seem to really drop back. But that's something that you can definitely do right there. Is you, is you can just work your way from the RB route back, maybe pass block the, the running back. Any man coverage is going to have um, success. You can see we're having a lot of success against what I expect to be cover three. Go ahead and we'll do that. We'll go to cover three. 
Uh, but it looks like that tight end is having a lot of success right up the seam there. So we're going to do that one more time. Like I said, it looks like he's having success right in front of this guy, um, which he is. So like I said, you have a lot of cover three beaters. Your man beaters are the A route and the X route. Next up, we got the PA Power O. This is a guy's pretty much any man or zone. You just streak the B route. Um, not not man, I should say, but any, any pretty much any zone. This uh, receiver, this tight end, will get open to the sideline as long as you streak the B route. This is mostly a running formation, so you're going to get a lot of success. Um, you know, basically play actioning out of the runs and then hitting your opponent with these plays. Tight end can beat man, but it's not very you know not very realistic. It's not a guarantee. Against cover four, just block the A route with the B route and a drag. This is going to be your biggest play here as long as you wait for this receiver to get past uh, the safety and you can see we're not getting a lot of uh, not getting a good throw but you can see it was well past that cornerback so block the tight ends it's really all you have to do i think dragging the b route makes more sense than having them on an in route but you can see how this receiver here just comes streaking past for an easy one play touchdown uh, over the top of the cover four corner play is different compared to other cover four beaters we wait for him to get inside the safety as you can see right here he just the safety just don't react very well as you can see you know that's pretty much going to be the play next up we got the post shot this play can have success against pretty much any defense as far as the crossers go the a route you're basically just starting off with the b route and then working your way back to the a route which is the tight end there whichever one gets open first you typically want to go with um, they're both gonna be good against man they're both gonna be good against zone here it looks like they're dropping back so i'll take the short check down and run underneath really simple play there this play can be a one play touchdown against cover three if you motion in the x route i'm not sure if you have to run it from the hash mark but i typically do and all you really have to do is just wait for him to cross although here i'm not really sure what defense that was that looked like it was more like a um not really sure that might have been a cover for a quarters coverage against cover three you can have a one play touchdown if you run it from the hash mark motion this receiver in and basically just wait for him to cross the field um he's going to be uh an easy uh look i mean he needs some speed but ultimately like i said it's something that is one of the easier one play touchdowns against cover three against cover four there's no setup required at all i uh, just wait for this x route once again to cross and then bomb it up over the top bullet pass leading away from uh, digs the safety uh the free safety it's really simple i'll go to the replay just to show um how that looks so we go back here like i said this here all you have to do wait for him to cross that free safety and i'm loading up bullet pass leading away just as long as he's past um this guy here once he's over the top of this safety there's nothing that safety can do so if you go back to the quarterback i'm already loading up the second i see him get inside next up we have the stretch alert x looky it's cover three or cover four it's best to go with the uh with the um the stretch and if it's a man coverage it's best to throw the to the receiver that's pretty much the best way i could say it any off zone uh you're going to hand it off any man coverage you probably want to throw it to the x route go go Like I say right there, we get that inside release. Man cover two press is a little bit hard to get off that press with a lower rate of receiver, but you can see it's always going to be man coverage. Next up, we got the jet sweep. It's another play. I mean, you can flip this play with no issue, nothing changes. Um, I would just say, like, here, it looks like a cover three. We got a safety in the box, and so we're going to run it this way. We're going to run away from that cover three safety to the outside where there's no, uh, there's nothing out here. So, if you, as long as you get a good block, you can have a very consistent run, although typically I want to try to use my blocker a little better and get outside. But right here, once again, safety on the other side, I'm going to run it the other way. So we also have, we have a blitzer over there as well. So if you do, if you follow that simple read, especially against cover threes, you're going to have a lot of success. This play should work well against just about any defense, though. Here, a little bit different. I would probably switch over to the zone, to the fake, um, but, you know, because you have a, a safety on both sides, really. Next up, we have the PA Experts Cross. Runs against random defenses. We put the Y route on a streak, although realistically, you can leave him alone. And this is pretty much going to be the play. I don't have to really do anything else. I'll leave my extra blocker in the back. Uh, and then, like I said, if it's a, you know, you're just going front to back here between the, uh, the, the, the shorter route, which is the running back, to the receiver. That's pretty much all I got to do. Like I said, I don't really have to do anything. I could, I mean, the X route will pull coverage back as well. 
Uh, you can leave the wire out there, give yourself that crosser. Uh, but realistically, you know, you're just going running back to receiver on the left side is typically the best way to go. Next up, we got the skinny post. It's best against cover three. They basically just get inside the uh, the gap between the cornerback and the safety. I would say low throwing it would be the best thing to do. And pretty much either side will work. I just like to go opposite whatever side is the safety. So you just have to worry about the... Uh, there are there are some linebackers to worry about. But ultimately, you know, you're going to split this coverage pretty much every time. As you can see right there, the linebacker reacts to the lower route, which is the running back. It's also good against man coverage. Uh, anything like a man zero, man cover one, man cover two, I think actually would probably be best because the safeties play back. But uh, same thing, they get inside release, low throw, bullet pass. Uh, you should have success on either side. So I'll do that again on the, you know, just as long as they get inside release. Like on that play, I, I took a sack because I was trying to force it to the other receiver, but you can see the difference. You're really just watching for the release. This guy here gets an inside release, so he's going to be open, where the other guy never got that inside release. He's on the outside. I don't know if he just couldn't beat the press or couldn't beat the jam, I guess. But yeah, that's definitely an interception if you make that throw. So you just have to watch for inside release. Next up, we have the Stretch Alert X Smoke. It's going to be best against cover three on both sides, but if this tight if this tight ends outside of the their you know widest linebacker or safety, it's going to be best to run it. Against cover three and cover four, it's going to be best to throw it to the X route. I would say this entire play is probably best against cover three and cover four because typically these cornerbacks play back in cover three and cover four for the run as well. So this is traditionally a cover three, cover four play. You see right here, they're, they're, they're working inside there. That would kind of force that because I want to throw it one time. <clears throat> okay, this looks like cover three, but you also have to worry about that safety over there. So in this scenario, it's going to be best... I mean, if I want to, I can flip it and the play won't even change and I can basically just throw it right out to this guy, get it to my fastest receiver, just work it up the field. So always try to run to the opposite side of the safety as well. If you have a cover three safety in the box, this here obviously it looks like a cover two or something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take it wide. Um, you know, so that's pretty much gonna be your look. Against cover four, this has doesn't need any adjustments since a one-play touchdown. Just as long as you have, I mean, obviously you have a really good speed guy in Henry Ruggs, but you can see how he splits the safety as long as you, you know, bullet, pass lead inside. There's a couple of things that you can do to make this play a little bit better, but ultimately I'm just waiting for him to cross that free safety there. As you can see, the strong, or the strong safety rather. As you can see, he's, um, you know, the uh, the actual uh, free safety is playing a little bit low. So if I bullet and pass it away from the, and that's a top notch safety too. That's the best safety in the game, which is probably why the coverage is a little bit tighter than it typically would be. But you can see how he can easily get inside of in between those two safeties. If I want to put these uh, tight ends on a pass block, it should make the play even better. I still have my check down on the running back. Uh, but you can see, like I said, there's just nothing. There's a lot less pulling those cover safeties back. As you can see, we're just getting, uh, we're splitting that very easily. You could also put the X route on a drag, which should make it a little bit easier too because the safety won't drop back as much. Um, but you can see Tyron Matthews really, like that one there is very easy. As long as, if you drag that X route, it's even easier. Next up, we get the halfback zone weak. Just a good run play. It's a it's a kind of a counter run away from the bunch. It works well with the quick pitch, uh, but ultimately it's just a consistent run. I find it's a better run. You can flip it and run towards the receiver side, but I don't find it's the better way to go. I find it's best to run it the opposite way. You'll typically have less opposition. You'll typically have uh, the user following the bunch, so you won't have to worry about him as much. And it's a very good consistent run play from this formation. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. So another play you can run against random defenses. Uh, the you know the B route, I mean, especially that's going to be something that if it's like a cover two man, we've gone over quite a bit. That um, that's something that you can just low throw, bullet pass inside. You'll have a lot of success if you know it's a cover two man. I would say it might be best to put the RB route on a streak, uh, but this is definitely not a cover two man. This is definitely going to be a man blitz. So the X route here is going to be one of the better um, plays against man, especially if it's a man blitz because it's pretty quick. But ultimately, the A route's a really good crosser against man. Uh, the RB route here is a good crosser against man. You can see right here, it looks like we have a man cover one. And uh, we have the receiver just streaking across. So, you know, this is a play where it's really a front-to-back read if it's a man or zone, once again, really between 
the RB route and the A route. Here it looks like we have cover three, might have been a cover three blitz. Uh, we just have success right over the middle. So ultimately you're kind of reading uh, the RB route and the A route for the most part. The X route should check down against man and the B route should cover two man beater. Um, then you have, like I said, the RB route here. That's really, you know, any cover three or cover four, I'm typically looking for him because there's another, never typically coverage underneath. Next up we got the PA boot. We go ahead and put the RB route on a streak. Put the B route in a flat, it's probably a better play, but if it's a man coverage, it's best to leave him on the zig. Uh, but then this uh, this A right here is just going to get outside of any zone coverage, cover two especially. Next up out of the single back bunch, we got the quick pitch. This play here, I mean, it's there's no real adjustments. Against cover three or cover four, you're going to have the most success. Next up, we got the verticals. It's a really good cover three play, but you could also run this against just about any play. Uh, all you have to do is put the A route on the streak and the B route on a drag, uh, which I didn't really do. Let's do it against the RB route on a streak, my bad, and the B route on a drag. Uh, you really have the same type of crossing route uh, setup that I've been uh, going over in a lot of my different uh, plays. But, you know, that's pretty much something you could run against just about any defense. That was a cover four quarters. Uh, we could go ahead and do that against man. Man cover two, let's go, let's do it again. If I didn't do that right, there we go. So like I said, I mean, the B route's already open, the A route crosses, but that's something, I'm not suggesting that route will always be there, but either that or the drag will be there. Um, we'll go and we'll do that against something like a cover three. Let's go, let's do that one more time. Like I said, this is something where everything should clear, the B route's already open, the A route's coming open, although realistically there, that was something I probably should have threw a little bit quicker. But um, you can see it doesn't really matter. That's something that you can do. It's a pretty easy setup um, against just about any defense. But if you have a cover three, this is probably best against cover three because the RB route really just gets open right at the cover three seam. It's just the way it discovers. So you can motion out the uh, the outside receiver to try to create more separation, but it's not something you really have to do. It's something that I just do through habit, and it kind of gives away where you're going. But against cover three, especially, this RB route is typically going to get open right at the seam. Now against cover two, you just have to streak the RB route and the B route will get open above the cornerback here. Um, you definitely want to run that from the open side of the field. As you can see, I've run out of space pretty quick. You can get some explosive catch and run type of plays as long as you run it from the open side of the field. So we'll go and we'll do that again. Cover two, Tampa two, put this RB route on a streak. Get this B route here over the top and like i said you get some really big catch and runs safety catches up we got a superstar out there but you can definitely get some big plays doing that trick next up we got the z spot it's another play that's good against random you just want to put uh, the b route here on a streak it's not really a man being play but you'll have a lot of success against zone with this flat and then and the route above it that looked like a man cover though so we're gonna go we're just gonna, we're gonna switch over to some of our man our zone cover concepts so Got the B route here. Like I said, the RB route will be open right away. The A route will be open over the top. Really easy series of plays. We'll have the same effect against cover three. You look at the same two routes. I said this is something that you could run uh, with success um, over and over. It's pretty much any zone coverage. Now, as far as your man coverage goes, you're probably going to want to put the X route on either a comeback or a slant or a curl or a, you know a drag, an in route, something like that. Any concept that beats man. We'll go ahead and we'll beat, uh, we'll put the cover three up again. We're gonna motion this guy across. This here has success against cover three. And it won't play a touchdown capacity with a setup like this. As you can see right here, we just basically split the uh, the safety in the cornerback. We're gonna have an easy one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we got the bench. Against cover three, cover four, the tight ends will get open. Against man coverage and cover two, the uh, the X route will get open. There. That looked like a cover two though. You can try to run this where you basically put the um, one side into a cover two side, and then the other side into the to, to the normal side. So here, like I said, it looks like we have that cover two, cover two zone gets open right outside of it. I'm sure if I go to the replay, the other side wasn't as successful as the streaking side. So if we go to the other side here. You see, sometimes the cornerback, it was definitely, he's definitely in better position, the safety and the cornerback. Where here you have much more separation because the safety's pulling back the tight end, or the tight end's pulling back the safety. Pretty much every route here should have success against man as well. So you can see here, that's a cover three, and it was still working to the outside. So you really have a lot of opportunity all over the field. This is a play that really works well against random, 
pretty much everything beats man and zone with proper timing and with these streaking, um, you know, streaking tight ends here. So that, that probably is an easy touchdown if I would have caught and ran that. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. I'll go random on defense. So like you can really run to either side. I would just say typically you want to take it to whatever side has a little bit of a blocking advantage, but it's going to have success both ways because it's an evenly stacked formation and it's definitely a bread and butter offensive run. So if you have anything, you know, if, if you see something like a cover three, you just probably just want to run away from the cover three safety, but that's about it. Next up, we got the jet sweep. Another play that's best against random, although realistically I'm going to run it the opposite direction because my tight end on this side is faster. This is not an explosive play because it's an end around to a tight end, but you can see it's a good play to mix up your opponent. Like I said, you want to make sure, typically if it's cover three, you want to run the opposite way of the safety, but I'm going to run it in the direction of my fastest player because I don't really know how good that other tight end is. But you can see it's a very consistent run. It's almost like, uh, you know, it's a trick play, but it's not, uh, we'll flip one more time, it's not necessarily the most explosive play but it's something where you can have a lot of success. You can see right here with a guy like Darren Waller, you can definitely have a lot of success uh, running this against off coverages like cover three, cover four, and even man coverages. Next up out of the single back two's close, we have the PA boot slide. We're gonna go with the Tampa two to start. All I'm gonna do is put the A route on a streak and that's pretty much all I have to do. The B route here uh, should beat most cover twos because it's just a cover two concept. Although I probably should have threw that a little bit sooner. But ultimately you have a good series of check downs along the way as well with the Y route and the X route. But you're gonna, you know, the B route's gonna get open pretty much every single time. As you can see right here, I mean, we can basically take these shorter routes if we guess wrong about the defense. It's also gonna have success against things like cover three because it's pretty much the same concept. Uh, the B route here a lot of times will have success underneath. It's also going to have success against things like cover three. Uh, because it's pretty much the same concept. You'll just have a little bit of a, a smaller window. You're probably going to want to throw it behind the receiver two by holding the left trigger or the L2 button just to have a low throw. Um, but you can see how it's going to have plenty of separation, plenty of space. Next up we have the bench switch. Against cover two or really any coverage, you can run this a couple different ways. You could put the uh, Y route on a streak, put the A route on a drag. You'll have a lot of success that way. Um, against cover two zones, you can see it really does a good job of pulling the, uh, the safety and the cornerback apart. You could also motion one of these guys across. And do a similar setup where you're streaking. I um, mean, you know, I can create a bunch concept, put the... The, the Y route on the flat it has the exact same effect. As you can see, we're just pulling apart the cornerback and the safety. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And you can do that exact same setup against pretty much any zone, and the uh, it'll have success, the, especially the X route will have success. This play works pretty good as is, though. You don't really need to do a lot, although the X route here, um, you'll have you know much more opportunity for the receiver to get caught by the safety if you don't put something to pull them back. Against cover three, like I say, you do the exact same setup against any zone. It'll pretty much have the same success as you can see right here. The X route gets open outside of it. It doesn't really matter. Cover two, cover three, cover four. But if I move the ball over, go ahead and I'll motion this guy over, streak everybody inside. And we're going to have a very easy play up the seam to the, uh, the receiver there. You can see the safeties can't react in time. Next up, we got the drive flood. It's a man beating play for the most part, so we'll just pick cover one man. Pretty much all these routes are man beating routes. Um, you can see the tight end is probably the star of the play, but everything here beats man. Except for the B route. The B route's the only one that doesn't. The Y route gets across the formation pretty quick. It's a really good check down. Uh, and this is just, so it's just a bunch of man beating concepts, although they're, oh, they're, oh, they're only over the middle. Except we got the halfback zone weak. Against zone, you can motion over one of these, uh, either the tight end or the receiver. I've made a lot of motions in this formation, so it shouldn't give it, you shouldn't tip your hand by any means. Uh, and then you can see you can have a really successful run play uh, behind that uh, that diamond uh, cluster of receivers. You can flip it if you want to. You can run it as is. Like right here, we have a lot of spacing going to the strong side, the tight end side. But typically, you want to go the opposite way of the cover through safety. And that's pretty much the play. Like I said, you can make any number of motions here. You can motion the tight end if you want. You can motion the receiver. It doesn't really matter. The tight end, obviously, a lot of times is a better blocker. So in a lot of scenarios, that would make the most sense. But it's a very consistent run play in this formation. Next up, we got the jet sweep. 
Another play that's going to work best against cover three, cover four zone, man coverage and stuff like that. But you can see it's just a very, you know, it's a quick inside handoff, which a lot of formations you have a lot more time where these receivers are motioning across. So the fact that this is so quick should give your opponent uh, a little bit of a harder time stopping it. So it's going to be best like right here. We have the cover three safety in the box on that side anyway. Run to this side. Next up, we have the out and ups. All you want to do is isolate one of these corners with these stop and go. So you can motion out either one. And you can see how, you know, these are just pretty good uh, man beater, cover one, cover zero routes. Although there, I didn't quite have the speed that I wanted. Sneed is one of the faster guys. You have a lot of really good check downs on a play like this too. The A route, the Y route, these are all very good check downs, but you can also isolate for a one play touchdown. Might make the most sense to go to your fastest receiver to try to isolate. Um, as you can see, I mean, Ruggs is going to make a lot of sense here, although realistically you got to get better protection too. As you can see, I don't complete it. But the bottom line is you see it gets past the cornerbacks pretty consistently, and they have a lot of really good checkdowns for man. Next up, we got the PA deep out. It's another man-beating concept. The X route and the B route, the only two routes, are going to have success over the middle against any man coverage. The... Uh, the X route is probably the best one, but the B route will have success there. I guess I was under pressure. So I'll do that one more time. For, the, for this route, I would say it's best to low throw it, although there gave me an accuracy issue. So let's do that one more time. Like I said, we'll get that low throw. Nice, easy completion over to the outside. So really two routes, both of them get open against man. Next up out of the tight way off, we have the PA post dig. It's so a good cover three play with no adjustments, but you can put the A route on a streak. You can also smart route the B route if to shorten that route. Um, it'll have a little more success, but ultimately you're just waiting for that B route to cross. And then you can see here, he's just gonna get behind that uh, that cornerback and pass that safety. You don't have to make any adjustments and it'll work the exact same way. I find it's best to put that guy onto a streak, but the B route here can take a lot of time getting behind uh, a lot of the uh, coverage. As you can see right there, it's getting jammed up a lot. So to me, putting the A route on the streak is probably gonna be the better way to go. The B route here, like I said, the only reason I was shortening it is because I didn't want him getting caught up too much. But you can see you can get a very explosive one-play touchdown um, if you if you have the time and if he doesn't get jammed up too much. Let's go and let's watch the replay there. Like I said, this guy here, it seems like he gets bumped around a lot less if you streak that tight end. Uh, and then there's nothing with space here. There's about 15 yards of space to throw that ball into the end zone very easy. Against cover four, I'm gonna put the X route a drag and motion out the B route. And this is pretty much gonna be an easy uh, one play touchdown, just as long as I wait for him to get inside that safety again. And then he gets across the formation. Even with uh, Tyre Matthew lit up in the zone, he still beats it. Just have to uh, basically, once again, wait till he gets inside the strong safety and bullet and pass lead away because he's well beyond the free safety's control. If you get a good, good enough pass lead, it'll be an even easier play. I didn't get a great pass lead. You can see Tyron Matthew almost caught up. But the better the pass lead, the bigger this play will be. Also works against cover two zone. If you can find that. Tampa two. Uh, yeah, or, or, I don't want any more hard flats. Let's go ahead and let's go. Um, there we go, cover to drop. Against cover to drop or cover to whatever, you just motion this guy across with the X route on a streak. You can, like I said, you can smart route this to shorten it again. It's not that necessary to have all that space. And you can see we're getting a very big play against uh, cover two, cover two zone as well. One play touchdown against both. So we go to the replay once again. Like I said, this flat route here, as you can see the check and release will get that cornerback to react. And just leaves this guy just wide open for an easy bomb it up touchdown. Next up, we got the PA pump go. Another good man play, just gonna want to motion him out and isolate. I'm gonna put the Y route on a streak because I'm doing that a lot. I'm gonna put the A route on a drag. Block the running back. This is pretty much a play. On the right side, we have your man beater. On the left side, we have a zone beater. Although, on, the, on this side here, you're going to really need him to get past that cornerback a little bit better. That was not a really good uh, release by, by Ruggs. I also want to move the ball over. So let's do that. We'll do that one more time. Set motion out Ruggs here. 
put them on a smart route just to shorten that. Put my A route on a drag, put my X route or my Y route on a streak. The running back it doesn't really offer too much. Here you can see that cornerback bit a little bit more. And you can see we're just having a lot of success getting over the top. I want a little bit more bite on the play action than that. That's really the only real issue here. So let's do that one more time. So that B route there, he gets us gets really bit on that. So that's that's really what I want. That's the look. I'll go to the replay to show what happened there. I said you're gonna get if that cornerback bites on the outside right there. The second he does that, I mean I could lob it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's already if he's even he's leaving. That's basically the bottom line. If he bites and takes the outside bait. You just basically wait for him to turn up and now it's an easy bullet pass lead outside for a one play touchdown. So that's the man side. The zone side will work against just about anything. But we'll start off with Tampa 2. Streak the, like I said, streak the Y route, put the A route on a drag, block the running back. That's pretty much the play. Although I accidentally gave myself double drags, but yeah, the X route here is going to have a lot of success getting outside of cover two zones. As you can see, we get a very easy one play touchdown there. This play will work the same against cover three um, if you want to run it like this. As you can see, he's going to get outside of that coverage eventually because of the streak. We'll also have that success against cover four, but I find it's best to streak these guys, block your running back, motion out the X route. And the Y route here will have a very big play up the seams. You can see we really stretch that out and get an easy one play touchdown. So left side zone, right side man. Next up we got the clown post. This is a man coverage concept. Pretty much any man coverage here, this RB route will have success. Huh? Pretty, any, pretty much any man coverage, you know, the, the B route, the RB route, these are all pretty good routes. Uh, with the exception of the stop and go, as long as you have uh, proper release angles, like right here, I can throw that low ball throw, get that open in front of the cornerback, or I could take the uh, the middle crosser, which is the, you know, the B route will also have a lot of success. So a lot of man beating routes here. Uh, on a play like this, I would just suggest low throwing if you're going to throw to the tight end. Next up, we got the drive Y corner. This play here, I'm gonna just put the RB route on a streak. Um, the A route is a good play against uh, cover two, which is what it looks like we have here. Uh, cover three, cover four, I don't know why I dropped it, but cover three, cover four should have some success as well as I'm going against random. So I'm not really sure what I'm looking at. Um, but here it looks like we have a cover two again. I mean, it's just a really simple cover two concept because the drag will typically keep the cornerback down. I don't think I'm actually in random. I think I accidentally hit cover two. So we're going to switch to cover three because it's going to be the exact same setup. Just streak the uh, the RB route and the A route will have success once it gets outside of Bobby Wagner. I guess that's a superstar for you there as you really hung him up, but it's still the same setup. So this particular play is a really easy um, setup for just about any defense. We'll go ahead we'll go... Uh, we'll go man cover too because the, the RB route can have successes with that as well, but so can the drag and so can the in route. So we'll do that one more time. Like I said there, even against man coverage because Sicky's still beating it. So any man, any zone, that pretty much is going to be the route. And then you also have the drag, which is going to be a very good check down. Next up, we got the four verticals. This is a play that's going to be good against man or zone, but against cover two, typically this B route here will have a lot of success to the outside. Uh, that's going to be your best read against cover two. You could go to the RB route, but typically it makes more sense just to go to this route. You can also motion him out. Um, you know, the B route here should have some success also, but his job is really just to pull the, the safety in. You don't even have to make that motion. You can run it as is, and it's going to be a very good play. Against cover three... All you really have to do is put the B route and the A route on a streak. Uh, you can either motion out the tight end or motion out the receiver. It doesn't really matter. But ultimately, the B route is just going to be gone in an instant, just as long as you bullet and pass it outside. Now, there, got caught, but ultimately, you can see the seams there. Let's go and let's do that one more time. I said, I'll motion this guy out. Once again, I've got to remember to put the cover three out. It doesn't really matter. Like I say, you can motion out either one. The safety's way further over there now. Uh, and then the B route here, once again, glitches out that coverage, glitches out that cornerback. And we get a very easy one play touchdown over the top of cover three. It's going to be more successful if I move the ball over. So 
We'll go and do that again. So I gotta make sure I'm in cover three. There we go. Say so one more time. B route. I'm just gonna slay that. I mean, from open from the open distance, it's even bigger. But ultimately, you can see how explosive this can be against both. Next up out of the single back wing flex close, we have the half back stretch. If it's a zone coverage, I would say it's best to flip it and bring across one of these tight ends because typically you don't get a defender to follow like you do against man coverage. Uh, but you can run it as is. You don't necessarily have to um, you know, motion anybody. You can just flip the play with the right stick. If it's a man coverage, a lot of times you won't have uh, any defenders out here. So like I go with like a cover two man, sometimes you, uh, let's see if we can baseline here but yeah sometimes you'll have you know the man both the cornerbacks will be on that side and then you can go to um, the short side but uh, I still find it's best to run to the receiver side and I find it's best to typically motion across one of these tight ends to give yourself a block advantage so don't do that again like I say you can see I mean there's a hole I don't really have a good running back with the Dolphins but you can see the hole there next up we got the halfback toss week now we're going to motion across this uh, tight end here and this play is going to be best against uh, cover threes, cover fours. That was a man coverage. Did you see the defender crawl, call, came across with me, but it still didn't matter. As it's a very uh, explosive run. You don't have to motion that guy across. If it's a zone coverage, I'd say don't motion him. If it's a man coverage, I'm sorry. If it's a, if it's a zone coverage, don't motion, or motion him. If it's a man coverage, then obviously you want to just run it as is. You can flip the play and run to the tight end side as well. In that scenario, even you know, still motioning this guy across would be a good move. As you can see here, we're gonna get that uh, blocking advantage. So against zone, make the motion. Against man, don't make the motion. Next up, we have the halfback zone week. We're gonna pick a random on defense again. This play here, I mean, if you have a gap right in front of you, it's pretty obvious. Um, I find that this particular play is probably best motioning the tight end across again. Uh, which is something that I did with the stretch formation. Um, a lot of times, if it's a zone coverage, no defender will follow. If it's a man coverage, though, sometimes you will get a defender to follow. But it's a really easy uh, run play. It's not necessarily the most explosive, but it's definitely going to have uh, consistent success. So let's go and do that one more time. I said this here, as long as that defender is a follow, which he does. But still, I'm just going to run it. Like I said, it's, it's still going to be still going to be a man on man, hat on hat. And you can see it's a, it's a pretty consistent run. We get close to five yards every time. You can also just run it as is. You don't have to make any motions at all. You can see how you can still have a lot of success. Uh, as you can see right there, that was actually my longest carry. So the motion sometimes might be a little bit forced. I find it's best to do this. Just, you know, if you don't make that motion, a lot of times you won't give away where the play's going uh, to the user. But ultimately, uh, motion or not, this is still a very consistent run play. Next up, we got the jet sweep. This series of plays here really works best against like cover threes, cover fours, anything where um, you know the cornerbacks play back. As you can see, I'm just basically this is these are some of the more consistent plays here. Jet sweeps. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but it's something that especially from this formation because the, the receiver doesn't really have to travel that far. You can really have a lot of consistent success, especially if um, you know, like I said, cover threes and cover fours are going to be best. This year looks like it might be like a cover two because that cornerback's really playing down, but uh, you can still have success. Like right there, I, I just took it outside wide. If you have a fast receiver this is something you could run in this formation pretty much all game next up we have the pa cross country it's another play that's going to work against just about anything i'm just going to streak the a route put the x route and the drag and that's pretty much it i can block my right back too if i want but ultimately this is a very easy man or zone coverage concept to uh to, to, to attack it's really simple that was probably a cover three the drag is going to pull back any deep zones this here looks like a man so i'm gonna block my running back or man blitz rather so i'm gonna block that running back the x route here is the shortest takedown i probably I should have tried to get it out a little bit sooner because of the pressure but ultimately it's just a really simple read between the you know the two crossing routes once again the a route there is really just to pull that coverage back and then if i have a little bit of time i can definitely get that ball away for a big play uh this could definitely be a big catch and run let's go let's do this one more time I said we're getting a lot of heat here i'm gonna go i'm gonna take that check down one more time or at least try we'll, go, we'll do that one more time so that running back to the flats is a good play against cover three, cover four. You can see there was nothing really over there. So, you know, that's not something you want to forget about. But mostly you'd just be staring at these crossing routes. Whether it's man or zone, the crossing routes will have success. The Y route um, is still a good play, though. You don't necessarily forget about it. But we're really looking for that big play going across the center. Either the big play or the drag. Let's go and let's do this one more time. Like I said, I'm keeping that... Uh, I'm keeping that... Um, 
you know, that um, play action just because I think it's helpful, but ultimately you can always take that away and just use the crossing routes. Next up, we got the PA cross switch. This play here, pretty much a man coverage play. I'm just going to streak the A route. I mean, the running back's a decent check down, but you're really just looking for these uh, these crossing routes here. These are going to be your man beaters. Uh, they're pretty quick, though. I mean, that's something that if you run in a lot of man coverage, uh, maybe even something like man zero, we're going to switch to that. Um, this is something that's going to bail you pretty quick. As you can see, these routes are just pretty, they're really good. I mean, especially if you got a speed advantage like Wild, just getting across the field really quick. So that's something that uh, you can do pretty much all game. Let's go ahead and let's switch over to man cover two just to show you how it works. Let's put that A route on the street one more time. Uh, like I said, that, a, that X route here, he's just getting across really fast. The B route here, that's a really good trailing route. So some really good man beaters. Works out really good as well when people are running um you know these uh when, when people use these um the curl flat version cover twos that look like this so i can just do the exact same thing put them on a streak like i said this x route this b route really good check downs although i thought i thought that throw wasn't going to hit but you can see really good series of plays uh to work against just any man coverage next up we have the smash there's two different ways to run this play you can either just put the x route on a streak uh, which is fine you don't have to make any motions. You don't have to give anything away. And against cover two, especially, you're going to see you're going to have a lot of space over here. That'll work against cover three as well. It's a good trick. Against cover three, if you run to the open side of the field from a hash mark, you can put the A route and the X route on a streak. Uh, block the running back, slide your protection. And a lot of times you can get a really big play um, if this cornerback here bites, which you can see right there. He definitely does. Put that X route on a streak, put the A route on a streak, maybe motion this guy out, although you can motion this guy out here too, put him on a streak. Uh, and against cover three, if we get that cover three set up, we can have a lot of success here because of that motion. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. Like I said, that X route there is going to fade, um, you know, basically just create a lot of separation between, um, you know, the, the, the cornerback and the safety. Like I said, you got to make sure you got cover three set. We're just streaking everybody. And we're gonna have a lot of success. So let's go ahead and let's do that one more time. I said, I mean, there's a lot of space there. Pressure and all still got it done. Uh, you get it much, you get it done much cleaner if it's not for the pressure, but ultimately you don't have a ton of check downs. So if you do it this way, um, you know, just be aware that you, it's a shot play. You know what I mean? There's not a lot of not a lot of other options here. So I mean I could put the A route in a drag and try to uh, create a little bit more of a check down, but you can see how you pretty much lose that separation down the field. And if it wasn't for the fact that I have Jay the Waddle, it probably wouldn't have had any success. Next up, we have the 01 Trap. This play is going to work best against uh, widespread uh, defensive alignments. Uh, especially obviously over the middle now here you can take it outside like if you have a tightly packed defensive uh, formation like that um, obviously it's going to be an inside to outside read next up we have the halfback inside zone it's another play from this formation where essentially um, you know it's the best inside run in the formation there's no real reads needed um, except you know you just want to make sure that you have a little bit of a gap to the left side but this plus play here does a pretty good job of blowing open holes these inside zone runs are definitely some of the most consistent in Madden 22 and it works really well with the stretch play so like here I could easily switch over to the stretch play because there's not necessarily a gap or I could just run this and try to take it outside uh, but without a doubt this is if you have spacing if you have gaps which a lot of defenses have some defensive have more than others uh, you can see how you can really have a lot of success uh, and you know just get to the next level like that there that, uh, that guard typically will try to get to that second level. He did a pretty good job there. Let's watch the replay. Early on, it didn't look like this guard was going to peel off. If I can get over here real quick. Um, all right, whatever. But, yeah, so you can see he starts off with the double team. These inside zones they typically start off with a double team, and then they get to the next level, which is why I ran directly at him before peeling outside because I wanted to make sure that he sealed that block so that I would have that space. Next up, we have the PAX Burst Cross. It's another play that's good against random plays. I'm just going to put the B route here on a streak, the A route on a drag. And it's pretty much, you know, reading front to back. If the running back's open here in the flat, I'm going to take that. That's typical of a cover three or a cover four. But I'm really working my way from front to back. I'm really working from the running back to the drag to the A route. The B route is really just there to pull coverage. This is pretty much going to be all that I uh, that I do here. And you can see, like I said, somebody's always going to be open. Right there, that was probably the most safe route. It took me a little while 
while to decipher because I thought that the deep route was going to be there. But ultimately, something will be here uh, when it comes to all these particular plays. You can see right here, that was probably a man coverage, but I think the my, my controller was on the linebacker. i got to be better about being on the defensive tackle with this remote just so I don't necessarily uh, run into those problems. Let's go through that one more time. I said that one there probably wasn't too indicative of what I was going to be looking at. I said right here, there's three levels crossing. One of them will be open every single time. The spacing is pretty impossible for any defense to take away. Next up, we have the sluggo spacing. Let's go ahead and let's do this one more time. See if this route gets open. There we go. So there, there we, he bites. Um, the sluggo is basically going to be a play that works only against man zero, man cover one. If we go to the replay here, you need a little bit of a better route running receiver than I think uh, Brown is. But you can see how against any man covers, as long as there's not a safety over the top, you can get an easy one play touchdown as long as um, you know this uh, this cornerback bites on that initial move. All other than that, I would just say block the running back because he really doesn't do much. If it's a zone, the B route should be open for a checkdown. Next up, we got the stretch wide receiver screen. This is going to be best against cover three and cover four off coverages. Uh, essentially, these screen plays are just really good anytime um, you know they run off coverage, cover three, cover four. It's really that simple. You have your stretch play, but you can't flip it, uh, so it's not like the other play. And you have to hold the button to to hand it off. Actually, I'm not sure you have to hold the button if it just hands off automatically. But typically, it's a good run play to the right side, uh, which is you know successful maybe against a couple different coverages compared to the the X route, which is really just successful against cover three and cover four. Uh, but ultimately, you can you know this is just a good play to to mix in. Uh, to confuse your opponent. Next up, we got the stretch alert bubble. It's going to be best against cover three and cover four off zones. Let's play here. I mean, the B route, it's going to, you only have one blocker, but you can steal that for a good five yards, probably on average, running that. Um, ultimately, though, you can also hand off against cover three. It's going to be also a good play to hand off against cover three and cover four because typically. Um, you have a lot of uh, the quarterbacks just typically drop back. So this entire play is really going to be best against cover three, cover four. The quicker you get out, the better, and the faster you receive, you have in the slot, the better. Next up, we get the halfback inside zone. It's just a good run play. I find inside zones are typically some of the better um, run plays. A lot of times, this this uh, guard will 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 break off to the next level, although he didn't on that play. But you can see how you can have a, a very consistent run game with a play like this as we get uh, two back-to-back -back positive runs. That one, obviously, a very big run. Uh, it doesn't really matter, like I said. A lot of times, this left guard will break off. If he does, great. If he doesn't, obviously, it's less successful. Next up, we have the jet sweep. Another play is going to be best against cover three and cover four zones. Any off coverage where the cornerbacks play back. Uh, you can see how, I mean, we can, you know, we can try to take it out wide. I probably could have got more if I did. But, you know, I'm going to take any opportunity I see because it's not a guarantee. I say right here, with these cornerbacks playing down the box, if it's like a cover two zone or something like that, it might not be the best look. Here, though, we just kind of sprinted everybody outside. As you can see, it's just a very consistent run, especially if you have your fastest receiver there. Next up, we have the mesh. Against cover two zone, you just streak the B route, motion out the RB route. It's really that simple. The RB route will get outside the cover two just as long as you uh, wait till he gets past the cornerback and then bullet and side, uh, uh, pass lead to the sideline. Against cover three, the B route will get open in the seam as long as you have a, a little bit of a better tight end. If I put Waller at that tight end spot, it would get open. <coughs> against cover three, the B route will get open up the seam and against man coverages, the Y route and the uh, A route, the drags will be really good plays. Uh, but ultimately, the biggest play to be had here is the one to cover two outside to the running back. Next up, we have the PAU drag wheel. I like to motion this guy in, bring him closer because he's really the main route. Then I'm going to put the A route on a streak and the Y route on a drag. And that's pretty much going to be the play. The A route's going to, uh, you know, it's going to pull the coverage. And then the X route here is going to be the play. Although there, we didn't get a very good throw because we were under pressure. So all I'm going to do is motion in Brown here, put the Y route on a drag, put the A route on a streak. That's all I really got to do. Play action, you can take that away if you want to, but realistically, the X route is going to be the plays. It's just a really good crossing route. It's really between that and the Y route. So I'm going to do that again. I said bringing this guy in is kind of important. The play action is not. I, I typically cancel it after the snap anyway. 
And like I said, you get a really big play here. That looked like it was a cover two or cover three. I don't know if I could have made that guy miss, but you can see it's a very consistent play. Next up out of the single back wing type, we got the stretch alert looky. This play is going to be best against cover three and cover four to hand it off and try to take it wide. Uh, and if it's a man coverage, you typically just want to throw it to the X route. It's a really good play, especially if it's like a cover, if you're inside the red zone, and a lot of times people come out like man blitzes and stuff like that, you can have success to the slant, especially if they run commit. This is a really, really, really good play if you're pounding the rock and your opponent, uh, you know, doesn't have a lot of success stopping the run, they might start run committing, then you can throw it to the, the stretch alert looky. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. If it's a cover three or cover four, I would say running it to the tight end side might be best. But realistically, I find there's more opportunity to the receiver side because there's better spacing. So right here, you could also motion one of these guys across and you're gonna have even more of an advantage, um, which you can't motion across the receiver side. So you can see that's my biggest run as we truck over a dude there. This play here, all I'm really gonna do is flip the play um, I typically find it's uh, best running it to the short side because it's the spread a little bit better with the receiver out far. There though, he didn't really get the block that I was hoping, but you can see how it's still, you know, to me it's best to flip it. Next up we have the zone fake jet. Now this play here, you want to make sure you have your fast tight end. Like I can put Darren Waller over here and I can definitely, um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily the most effective play. It's really going to work best against cover three three and cover four like this here it looks like it might be a cover two so i wouldn't suggest it but it's something that you can definitely throw in as a nice wrinkle so any off coverage cover three cover four these are not looking like that these are looking like cover twos um, but you can see that you can have some success and you can definitely catch your opponent off guard next up we have the pa boot slide against any zone coverage the b route is going to be a good play just as long as you streak the a route not really a lot of great man coverages here, but you can see the B route. That was either a cover two or a cover three. You can see it's a very big play. Um, it typically doesn't matter because most zone coverages aren't very good. So, so here, definitely got a cover two that time. I think the last one was a cover three. That one definitely was a cover two. As you can see, it's gonna it's gonna attack the same area. You could also motion this guy in the same way, just to get him across the formation a little quicker. He's definitely gonna be your man beating route. So here we get that man. Like I said, that's definitely your man option. And then your uh, your B route's gonna be your, your cover three route. Next up we have the PA jet sweep. So the X route here, you can see, even without the ability to smart route it, it's still a very good man cover one play or man zero. It's 50-50, it's a lot of these, um, a lot of these routes, sometimes they'll work, sometimes they won't. It's a good shot play though. Somebody's running cover one man. As long as he's, if he gets to this point, just a bullet or a, you can either bullet or lob. Typically against man, you want a lob outside. But you can see how, you know, once he gets, if he gets even with the cornerback, he's leaving. Now there are, are times, like I'll try to run again. There are times where that might not work out. I said right there, that's not a good look. The tight end here is a decent crossing option, but that's just the difference in the look between whether it's a home run or it's not. So it's really a one a one play route. Like I said, you see here, he doesn't get behind him. He doesn't bite, so obviously you're not going to make that throw. But he has to get behind the cornerback for the play to be successful. Next up, we have the PAU drag wheel. All I'm going to do here, number one, I like to motion this guy in because I feel like that route is going to be more effective. You can put the B route on a streak and the Y route on a drag. And then this is pretty much going to be the best setup. But if you want additional blocking, um, you could easily block the B route, put the A route in a drag because I don't really find that that route's really doing too much. You can also block the running back, uh, but ultimately I find the play action is helpful when it comes to uh, these safeties. And you're pretty much going to get this guy or the drag open pretty much every time. Like I said, the running back here, that's a good, you know, if it's a cover three or something, the running back's going to be a good check down in the opposite direction. Um, so you don't really need the, uh, the other tight end crossing. That's just something that if they cover, you know, if they follow all these other routes to the right, you can always throw it to the running back. But realistically, it's all about the Y route and the X route crossing. So this is just a really good high-low play there. Got to do a little bit better job with timing and setting my feet. But you can see how he's getting open pretty much every time. And that'll be that way against pretty much any man or zone. This route's going to be a very good route. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that one more time. I said that tie is really just to pull everybody back. And then you're just basically getting a very big play. Um, just as long as you throw it with a little bit of better timing. Now we have a man coverage. 
It's going to be the exact same thing. I said the drag is always there. Man coverage, it might be even better because you can see it's just a very good route. Next up, we got the Sluggo Spacing. It's another man cover one, man zero type of play. This play here, it's really once again all about the uh, the man beater, which here he just kind of runs right past him. So that was the, a pretty good first attempt. Uh, it really didn't look like he bit. Like a lot of times the cornerback bites. We'll go to the replay here. A lot of times you'll see the corner, like this was just a smooth, it's almost like he just ran right past him. Where typically it's a little bit more of a, you'll see the cornerback react poorly uh, type of animation. So if that's the case, just bullet pass lead outside, especially if there's a cover one safety over the top. Doesn't necessarily work as well against cover two man, but a very good play against cover zero and cover one. The Y route's a good check down versus cover three and cover four. And I would say blocking the running back makes the most sense because he really doesn't do much. Next up we have the vertical shot. It's a good cover two play if you just streak the tight end. This X route here will bend outside as long as you wait till it gets past the cornerback. You get even more if you run it from an open side of the field. And I think it's also best to drag one of the tight ends on the other side as they really don't do too much. So I would say dragging and blocking one of the tight ends it doesn't really matter which two you choose. But ultimately, this is just a straight cover two play. And now you can see how this guy's getting outside. I was hoping to get a little bit of a better catch and run there. But I'll take a big completion against cover two either way. Next up, we have the double post. It's a good man cover two play. I would say just streak the A route to try to pull the safety back. And then once the X route turns in, it's typically a easy uh, play. Just as long as you, um, you know, basically bullet and uh, low throw, which is LT or L2, um, you can have a lot of success with that. But you can see, I mean, they're pretty close, but as long as you throw it to the ground, it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, the X route should have the same success. As you can see, he's just basically, you know, it's a high percentage throw against cover two man. Next up, we got the PA deep cross. Against cover two zone, you can motion across this uh, B route here, put the X route on a streak, and you have a very big play. You can also put the A route on the drag and block the running back if you want. These are all options you can do, but you don't have to. Uh, but the uh, yeah, we're definitely going to get this guy open over the top. Now, the running back probably would pull that cover two cornerback down a little bit better. Um, so that's typically the setup. I would say, you know, nine times out of ten, just, just run it like that without doing the additional uh, change. And the running back will have that effect, but ultimately it doesn't really matter because, like I said, it's a very big play. Typically, you want to run it to the open side of the field, too, though, because you will run out of space to the sideline. Against cover three, just put the X route in the drag. I'll block my running back, slide my protection, and the B route is going to have a one play touchdown just as long as you can get enough protection. For whatever reason, that just crosses the field and is a very explosive play. Next up, we got the PA scissors. I'm just going to put the X or B route here on a streak. That's pretty much it. The RB route and the A route, one of those two receivers will get open nine times out of ten against most zones. There's no real man beater, so the X route and a comeback, um, I guess an in route or an out route or a drag or a zig, those would be one of the, the better ways to go. But we'll go and we'll do that one more time. Like I said, we're really just looking at the A route and the RB route. Those are pretty much your best options. So I'm running this against random. I'm going to put the B route on a streak. And pretty much the A route or the RB route will be open nine times out of ten. You just basically have to play them against one another and just watch the routes, which one gets open, the higher or the low route. There's no real man beater, so you can put the X route either on a slant or a drag or something of that nature. Just something that typically beats man. So if you get a man coverage, you have an easy check down. But you're pretty much just going high or low when it comes to these receivers. And then Kaseki's a beast as he has a really big play there. But yeah, pretty much any zone coverage, Kaseki or the running back uh, Carter will be open. Next up, we got the wide receiver out. So another good man coverage play, specifically to the X route. Um, he will beat most man coverages just as long as you wait to throw the ball until he gets outside the cornerback. It's typically going to be best against man cover one or man zero. But, um, you know, it's something that you really have to make sure you don't throw the ball too, too late. It's, all, it's really a timing throw. You have to throw it when he's basically breaking or when he gets past the cornerback. Against man cover two, it's not going to work out so much because he gets an outside um, start. I mean, you can, still can, but it's still a little bit more dangerous. So ultimately, any man coverage should have success. Next up, we got the wide trail. Let's play here. I just motion across. Kaseki put him on a streak. That's it. And then the X route is going to be a very big cover two play. We'll do that. 
I said this here is going to just basically fade to the outside. It's going to be a very easy one play touchdown against any cover two zone. Also against any man coverage where there's no safety over the top. So something like this, which is pretty popular online, will have success also. I don't have to streak. I don't have to motion over the tight end though. Somebody's running this particular play. That's just a habit. But uh, the X route here is once again just going. It's just a, it's just a route that works really good against man coverage as long as there's no safety over the top. Now you do have some other good options when it comes to man, like the B route will get open, the A route will get open. Um, so you do have some other really good options against man coverage. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. So that plays gonna be best against cover three. As you can see, any off coverage um, where the uh, the cornerbacks drop back, it's going to be one of the better runs. Next up, we got the inside zone weak. Probably the best run play in the formation. Um, you can see how the, the receiver pulls the linebacker out a lot of times uh, away from the, the line of scrimmage based off of what you're looking at. There on the last play, it did here, it will not. But ultimately, this is just a really good inside zone play. It's best to be used with the stretch play. As a good counter, like right here, to have the stretch. You know, if it's a man coverage, there's no cornerback out there. This is going to be the perfect opportunity to hit a stretch run to the opposite side. So that's really going to be the two plays in this formation. Here, it looks like we have a cover three. Like I said, this is just, you know, the blocking on a play like this for some reason just does a really good job. Uh, the inside run is much better than the outside run. Next up, we got the halfback counter weak. another good run play if your opponent is spread too far apart because the more uh, spacing you have the better for counter runs so, so against any spread defensive looks um, you can see I mean we're gonna have a lot of success as uh, that safety flow is quick but you can see how successful a run this can be especially since a lot of people are gonna place to the strong side mostly by shifting or uh, pursuing with the with the user next up we got the inside zone weak This is one of my favorite run plays um, in this formation particularly. I just find that, I mean, the blocking is amazing. That guy right there did a good job of taking away the safety. And Oh, man, I got caught. But, yeah, you can see how explosive this run is. This is just best if it's, you know, the more the more shifted they are to the other side, the better. You can see right there, I mean, that guy came right in in the, in the crossing. Fullback still took him out and let me make a play. So whenever uh, they're shifting to the, the strong side too dramatically or paying too much attention to that side, you hit them with this. Uh, also, if you have a really spread defensive alignment, this is going to have a lot of success. But these inside zone weeks are probably some, some of the better runs in the game. Next up, we got the PA Power O. This really is successful against just about any zone coverage, but it'll probably be best against cover two. Um, as you can see, the drag's a good check down there. That was probably cover four quarters, but mostly any non-matching. I shouldn't say I shouldn't say it works against any zone coverage. I should say it works against any. Like I said, right here we have that cover two. You can see I want my best tight end out there because that's the money route, the corner route. But ultimately, I have my probably a much. I want Darren Waller to be there essentially. But ultimately, I'm playing the fullback versus that's cover three right there. Fullback versus um, the tight end in the in you know the outside. That's pretty much all there is to it when it comes to zone coverages. So streaking the A route only really draws the coverage back. Your drag is going to be pretty much your only man beater. There we got that cover four again, but I could still catch it in front of the guy. But yeah, I mean against cover four, you treat that like a like a man coverage. Cover four quarters would ultimately be a man coverage play, and this is just a good play to mix in because you can see how you have a lot of really overpowered run plays with this formation. So you have a good passing option if your opponent's playing the run too heavy. Next up, we got the PA slide. It's so another good pass play against random defenses. Ultimately, you want to put a, a running back at the fullback spot, but you're really playing the fullback versus the uh, the tight end here. Uh, against man, the tight end is going to work, uh, and also the comeback route will work against man, but those are really the only routes that you're going to be looking at. Right here, we got that man coverage. Like I said, it's going to be to the tight end. These are just good play action uh, plays to use off of the run plays. So anytime you have, like, a, like here's another man. Like you said, they're taking away the shorter route, so the tight end is pretty much going to be the guy. But ultimately, if you have a fullback, if you put a running back at the fullback spot, it's something like a cover three or something like that. A lot of times you get some good catch and runs. Here it looks like we have another man coverage, but like I said, that's really your three levels. Is the fullback, the tight end, and the comeback will be your three layers of passing. Next up, we have the PA sprint halfback flat. It's another good play against any zone coverage on the right side to streak the A route. The B route will typically get open. Either the running back or the B route will get open. Those are typically going to be your reads. If it's something in the flat right there, I guess I could take that and turn up for a catch and run. Uh, but it's typically going to be the tight end. 
You have a good man beater in the X route as well. That'll be your man beater check down if you get a man coverage. But like I said, it's pretty much going to be about this tight end and the running back against any zone. And then you have your 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 crosser for any uh, any man coverage, which I don't know if I'll actually see. Might just take my word for it. But the crosser is still a pretty good play regardless. You can see even against zone coverage. That was man coverage. So there you go. You got your man beater there. And then your other side's all about zone beaters. Next up, we got the post shot. Against random defenses, the A and the B route tight ends will get open. I typically like the motionless guy in. He'll basically just pull back coverage, and it'll help to get those guys open on the outside. As you can see right there, they're already kind of condensed because of the motion. But you can leave them out there. It really doesn't matter. It's going to be the same for the uh, for the A route and the B route. But against cover three or cover, especially cover three, motioning in this X route here is going to help to get this guy across the formation and be a one play touchdown um, as long as it's you know any cover three zone typically will have that success you can also have that success against cover four that's traditional cover four not matching cover four let's go and let's find that that play though you don't want to move we don't want to motion the guy in. you just want to leave him out typically you're just going to wait for him to cross that that safety right there Cross that free safety once again, and you can see how he splits the safeties right up the center. So you can see here, once he gets inside the free safety, bullet pass lead away. It's really all there is to it. He's well beyond the safety here, and he's never going to be able to catch up. So you're just bulleting a pass leading away from the free safety. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.